Hello and welcome to this and next exercise. This is uh, another two-factor ANOVA uh, called factorial design. So uh, what this allows us to do now is to be testing for differences across multiple treatments within two factors of investigation or two variables uh, of investigation. So what we're going to be doing in this exercise is similar to many of the others that we've done where we're going to be partitioning the total variation within our data set but now we're going to we're going to split it up into four different sources of variation one ssa sum of squares due to differences uh, in treatments in factor a so our first factor plus ssb so that's the variation that exists in the data set due to differences across factor b plus, and this is a new one, interaction. This is any variation that exists in the data set due to specific interactions between two different treatments or different treatment combinations. If there's a difference between certain combinations of treatments relative to others, that brings in some additional variation to the data set as well. Plus, SSE, which is the same as it's always been, just random fluctuation, random variation within uh, within that data set. So when we're looking at a factorial design, now we actually have three sets of hypotheses because we're testing for difference across treatments in one factor, treatments across a second factor, and we're testing for our differences uh, due to interaction. So we have now three sets of hypotheses. So the first one, let's say is going to be mu a equals mu b equals mu c and the alternative not all are equal and again i'm just limiting ourselves to three uh three means because that's the minimum number of means or of treatments that really makes this type of analysis relevant uh, any more than that is possible but just adds to the complexities of the calculations we want to keep this as simple as possible so this is uh let's call this our factor a here i'll look at uh we'll get into our problem here here's our factor a factor b Factor B, it looks like I have just two treatments here over in factor B. So this is mu1 is equal to mu2. And we can say here not all are equal, but we only have two treatments in this factor. So it's safe to say, well, not mu1 and mu2 are simply not equal. And then we have interaction. Oops. Our interaction null hypothesis is that there's no interaction. And our alternative hypotheses will just say uh, interaction exists. And so what that is looking for is whether or not, again, there are specific combinations of treatments um, that result in a difference relative to other combinations of treatments. So let's get into the exercise here and then we'll work out some of the details here. So here a designer of commercial retail space is doing a study to determine which method of managing lineups at the till work best. Method A involves many small lineups at individual tills. Method B involves one large lineup being served by multiple tills. The table below provides uh, wait times and minutes of customers in three different retail settings using both groups, um, both proposed methods of lineups. So we have our factor A. These are our different types of uh, retail settings. So this factor, this is retail settings. Within that factor, I have three treatments. So in factor A, lowercase a, we have three treatments within that factor. In factor B, is our different methods of lineup. Factor B, we have two treatments uh, within factor B. And within that data set, how many observations do we have per treatment combination? Well, if I look at, here's one treatment and another treatment. For that combination of treatments, I have R equals three, uh, three replications, so three observations per treatment combination. Now, you see in this table, I've taken some shortcuts because these factorial designs can be time consuming uh, to calculate everything that is required. So here I've got, I've already included our treatment means. So these are the means for method A and method B. 
Down here, I have treatment means across factor A, so that's the mean for grocery, electronics, and toys. And here, these interaction means, these are the means of the relevant three replications. So 6.33, that would simply be the mean of these observations. 1.67, that's just these three. Okay, so the interaction means are the means of just the relevant replications, the means for treatment combinations, and the other means are similar to what we've looked at before where we're looking at uh, treatment means. And so we'll be testing, do we have evidence to show a difference between these two means, between these three means, and finally between these six means. Okay, so let's get into uh, our ANOVA. We're going to have a few formulas here uh, that we're going to be working with. The first one, uh, let's see, oops. <clears throat> the first one, which we'll avoid using, I'll, I'll give you this one. In fact, SST is given to us right here for the same reason we did this for the randomized block design. Uh, it's just a lot easier to be given SST rather than to calculate it. I'll give you the formula here anyways. Uh, it's the same same concept. It's the difference between individual observations and the grand mean squared. And it just looks a lot worse because there's going to be three summations. So I is 1 through A, J is 1 through B, and K is 1 through R. Uh, sum of squares for factor A, this one is B times R, and then we're looking at those treatment means across factor A, I is one through A, uh, SSB, let's squeeze it in down here, this is A times R minus that grand mean squared, adding across those treatments in factor B, interaction, this is the one that nobody likes to calculate, and this is the one I'll probably cheat on to, to keep this video as short as, as possible. Uh, this is R times, we have a double summation, I is 1 through A, J is 1 through B, X bar I, J, so these are those interaction means, these ones in here, minus the relevant treatment means, and add back that grand mean. Okay, and then finally, uh, SSE, again, that's one of these calculations that would require matrix algebra, so we will simply use uh, this identity, SSE is simply the total variation minus these other components, SSA minus SSB minus SSAB. Okay, so let's get into these calculations. Now, uh, I've, I spent a little bit more time talking about the notation and talking about these formulas in the first video uh, in for 13.3a. Uh, so if you want a little bit more discussion on the notation, I encourage you to watch that video. This one, I'm just trying to get through uh, this problem without too much redundancy. So here's our factorial, our, our, our ANOVA table. I'm going to add our SST in here, 60.5. So here's our total at the bottom, 60.5. And here we're going to have our two, tr our two factors. One is retail setting, the other one is the method. So let's call this retail setting, also known as factor A. This one is the lineup method, factor B. This will be interaction. And this is error. Sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F statistic, P value, critical F, why did I write a P? Critical F, and we'll do these tests at alpha 05. Keep it, keep it nice and simple. As simple as possible. Okay, let's start with uh, SSA. So factor A I've called the retail setting. So let me just clean this up a little bit. So for that calculation, our relevant means are these treatment means across that specific factor. So I'm going to be using this formula here. So this is going to be SSA. 
So B times R, I have two treatments in factor B times three replication. Notice again, that's just multiplying through by the number of observations in each of those treatments. It's really the same type of calculation we've done for other ANOVA exercises. So I have 3.83 minus this grand mean, which is also 3.83, that one's easy. The next one is 4.83 minus 3.83 squared plus the one 2.83 minus 383 squared. Okay, so we can calculate that one. We could maybe even do that one in our heads, but I don't want to take any risks here. So that first one is zero, okay. 4.83 minus 3.83 squared plus 283 minus 383. I guess I didn't really need this calculator, did I? 2 times 2 times 3 is 6. Mm. 2 times 3 is 6. So there we have uh, our SSA, our sum of squares for factor A, is just 12. That probably is the easiest calculation we'll be doing. Degrees of freedom for, 12, uh, for, for factor A, this is again same as it's been for other calculations. The number of treatments minus one. We had three treatments, so degrees of freedom is two. Mean squared for factor A would be uh, 12 divided by two is six, okay? So that one was not too bad. I was expecting a little bit worse, actually. Let's do factor B. So now I'll use this formula. So as you can see, it's actually quite similar. It might be a little bit uh, shorter because we only have two treatments, although the numbers might not work out quite as nicely as what we just had for the first one. So SSB, so we multiply by A times R, so that's going to be 3 times 3. So again, it's just the number of observations in that relevant treatment. 3 times 3 is 9. As you can see, there's 9 observations in that treatment. That's the same as, well, we have three replications times three treatments. So, it's, again, it's similar to what we've seen before. It's nothing too different, just the notation changes. So that first mean here, I'm looking at, let me clean this up. We're looking at this one up here, 4.4. So 4.44, and still that same grand mean as always, 83 squared. And then the next will be this one, 3.22 minus that grand mean squared. So that one's not bad, although I'm going to use the calculator. 4.44 minus 3, oops, whoops, whoop, whoop, try again, 3.83 squared plus 3.22 minus 3.83 squared equals and then times that by 3.3 so times that by 9 equals 6. Points, let's call it 6.7 it's pretty close 6.7 okay scroll down here's 6.7 degrees of freedom treatments minus 1 we had two treatments so 2 minus 1 is 1 so there's 6.7 Okay, interaction. This is the one that uh, can be time consuming. So uh, let's use let's use pink for interaction. S S A B. So now that's going to be this one here. So here we multiply by R. R again. It's the number of observations in that relevant mean, the one that we're that we're studying. So this is three. And now we're going to have, now we're going to be using these means here. Oops, not that one, this one. Our interaction means, and we're going to be subtracting out of it, oops, the relevant uh, treatment means. So, we'll be looking at these treatment means and these treatment means. Now let's let's get started. So I'll start up here. 
5.33, subtract its relevant treatment mean, so those two values. 4.44 minus 3.83, and then add back the grand mean squared plus and now I'm on to this one 6.3 so that's still 4.44 is the relevant treatment mean <coughs> but now 4.83 so 6.33 minus 4.44 minus 4.83 add in that grand mean again and square it I'm gonna move down here <coughs> Next one. Now I am at 1.67. 1.67 minus, and we're still in that same treatment in factor B, so I still subtract out 444, but now I'm into this treatment in factor A, so minus 283, and add back in that grand mean squared. Okay, now, so we're halfway there, and now we come down to this one. So 2.33 minus its relevant treatment means, so that'll be this one and this one. Minus 3.22 minus 3.83 plus 3.83, that grand mean. Now we're on to this one. 480, oops. Uh, this one, 3.33, relevant treatment means here and here. So 3.33 minus 3.22 minus 4.83 plus 3.83. And finally, last but not least, now we're into this one here, and it's still these treatment means 322 and 283. 4 minus 3.22 minus 2.83 plus 3.83 squared and whew, there we go we got it. Now you don't want to watch me calculate all of this right so I'm going to cheat. I know it's not fair but it's better I cheat than to have to record all of this and risk making a silly mistake. So I have right beside me on my computer screen right here, I have our answer for SSAB interaction. This is gonna equal 28.4, 28.4. So I hope if you're following along, if you want the practice of doing those calculations, please do so. I hope that you get the answer of 28.4, for interaction, okay? So now that we've got that, and now the rest of it is a little bit easier, a little bit faster, less tedious. SSE, so we take total sum of squares, that which was given to us in the problem, 60.5 minus 28.4 minus 6.7 minus 12, and we have 13.4. Oops, so 13.4. Okay, let's fill in our degrees of freedom. Interaction, this is just r minus one. We have three replications, so three minus one is two. Error, this one's a little bit different. A, B times r minus one. So the factor, uh, so the, the, the product of the number of treatments we have. So in factor A, we had uh, three treatments. Factor B, we had two treatments. So A times B, we have six times r minus one, so times three minus one is two, so six times two is 12. Finally, uh, digs of freedom total, this is just going to be same as always, nt minus one, uh, or add up all of our degrees of freedom uh, above it, and so we should have 17. I think we had uh, 18 observations, so 18 minus one is 17, which is 12 plus two plus one plus two. Okay, now let's get our mean squared. So everything just divided by its degrees of freedom, 28.4 divided by its degrees of freedom two, so that's 14.2. And for error, oops, error is 
0.4 divided by 12 is 11.12, uh, not 11, 1.12, 1.12. Okay, now we can get all of our F statistics. So our F statistics now, let's go back to a neutral color here. So we have three F statistics. One is MSA over MSE. The other is MSB over MSE. So A and B, I'm talking about this, A and B. The other one is MSAB, which is our interaction, is AB, always divided by always MSE in the denominator. So here we have 6 over 1.12. Here we have 6.7 over 1.12. Here we have 14.2 over 1.12. Grab our calculator. So 6 divided by 1.12, 5.36. Next one, 6.7 divided by 1.12, 5.98. Next one, 14.2. Uh, divided by 1.12, 12.68. So, we're almost, almost done. Only 21 minutes so far, hey? It's uh, faster than the first video on this topic. Let's go to our F table. So here we now have two different critical values. They all have 12 degrees of freedom in the denominator. They all have MSE in the denominator, but the numerator is not necessarily always the same. Here it is the case that we'll have two that have the same numerator degrees of freedom. This one will be a little bit different. It's possible all three of them be, are, are different, uh, but it doesn't really change things much. You just have to be careful when you're looking them up in the F tables to make sure that you don't do a silly mistake like I've done in the past on some of my videos. So let's look up um, critical F, alpha is 05, 2 degrees of freedom numerator, and 12 denominator. So here's, uh, whoops, here's 2, give me my pen back, give me your pen, 2 degrees of freedom numerator, and here's 12 denominator. So where those come together, and alpha's 0.05, so we have two of our critical values are 3.885, so that's this one, 3.885, with two degrees of freedom. This one is also two degrees of freedom, so that one has happens to be the same uh, critical value. For the factor B, that one is only one degree of freedom in the numerator, so it's still 12 denominator. But now I'm going to come down this first column for one degree of freedom in the numerator. Still alpha is 05, so that gives us a critical value here, 4.747. 4.747, okay. Uh, let's get our p-values while we're in the mood here. So let's look at that same, that same distribution, 1 and 12. Our critical, or our test statistic there was, oops, our test statistic, where did it go? The test statistic for this one was 598. So 598 here. Sheesh, I'm losing it here. There we go. So I'm looking in this one, one degree of freedom. 598 is in between these two values. So our p-value is in between those, so between 0.025 and 0.05. So this one is less than 0.05, greater than 0.025. Uh, whoops, I made a mistake. We're looking at this one, one degree of freedom. That one's less than 0.05 and greater than 0.025. Okay, now the other one, same distribution, two numerator. 12 denominator, so we're back to this one here, 
And we're looking at this block of numbers here for our two test statistics, which are 5.3 and 12.6. So 5.3, that's in between these two. So that gives us a p-value between 0.025 and 0.01. So this one is between 0.025 and 0.01. And interaction, 1268, that one's probably off the charts. That one's larger than our largest, so our p-value is going to be smaller than the smallest. So that's going to be less than 0.01. So p-value is less than 0.01. Okay, after all of that, now we can draw some conclusions. So if with an alpha of 0.05 for all of these tests, here are all of our p-values. This one here is less than 0.025, less than 0.05, and less than 0.01. And if we look at our critical values, again, with that distribution, for all of them. This is our critical value up here. In every case, our test statistic is larger than our critical value. So all of those are out in that rejection space. So for every one of these hypotheses that we have from half an hour ago, we set these up. Every one of these we can reject, reject, and reject. So we definitely have some differences across our data set. In other words, coming back to give this some context, our data was measured in the wait times and minutes of customers in these three retail settings uh, using both of these proposed methods. So what we can say here is that there is definitely, we do have evidence to show that there is a difference in wait times uh, across these three retail settings, grocery stores, electronic stores, and toy stores. There is a difference across retail settings. We can reject on factor B hypotheses. So there is also a difference across the two methods. Uh, this is the many short lines at individual tills or one long line at uh, one till, or sorry, one long line at multiple tills. And we can reject on interaction, meaning that there's actually a specific combinations of these two treatments that are statistically different uh, from each other. So here we found that there's uh, interaction, there's differences across treatments in, in both factors. So let's uh, get a lot of information from this, from this exercise now. So that's it. That's how we do a factorial. I hope that helps. Uh, sorry these take so long. We're up to half an hour again. Um, but the calculations are a little bit tedious, even though I even cheated and I skipped this big long one. You can imagine that would have added another 10 minutes uh, to the video. So hopefully this all makes sense. I hope it has helped. And uh, I thank you very much uh, for watching. Okay, bye-bye.